ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಮೃತ್ಯುಂತಿರ್ವ ವಿದ್ಯಾಮೃತಮಶ್ನುತೆ ಸರ್ವೇತು ಸುಖಿ ಸಂತು ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೆ ಭದ್ರಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತು ಮಾ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ಭವೇತ್ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಫಲ್ಲಾ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ವೋಕೇಶನ್ ನಾವ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವಾ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಪರಿಷತ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸುಹಾಸ್ ಗೋಡ್ಸೆಜಿ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಜಿ ರಘುರಾಮಾಜಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಗೋವಾ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಗೋಡ್ಸೆಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ today is a great day and in our webinar series we started from july this is the 12th uh, lecture we have and therefore it is a very important landmark we are reaching today vidyan parishad has been having regular lectures workshops and then the science film festival at vidyarthi vigyan manthan now this year because of covid uh, there are severe restrictions on our activities but then we came out with psychquest a webinar series which has been going on successfully for last 3 months well um, today we have amongst us professor g raghurama who hails from the same coastline as ours a person who has come from a very small village went to different places for his education and ultimately reached one of the highest institutions in this country bits pilani so we welcome you and we are proud to have you amongst us to tell br- briefly about his background he graduated from st aloysius college mangalore did his msc in physics in from iit madras and had his phd from an institution i am very proud to say where we have our roots vidyan bharti as swadeshi science movement was born in indian institute of science and then we are very happy that we have a scholar of stress who had his did his phd from indian institute of science he joined bits pilani in 1987 and was elevated to be the professor in 2000 he was senior professor by 2012 and today he is heading the kk birla campus goa he has more than 40 research papers and these are referred they are from very standard journals for his contribution to science and technology he has been recognized and felicitated by corporates such as nokia microsoft skill tree knowledge consortium and others he is is a member of technical advisory board of tradel technologies pune he has visited several countries uh, such as australia the us ireland and so on for collaboration to establish collaboration of bits so that the standard high standards of education can be reached he has been uh, he was the director of uh, pilani campus from 2010 to 2015 and in 2015 he 
came over to Goa. I took the reins as the director of this campus. So, sir, we are happy that you are amongst us. And please do share your thoughts with the members who have joined very enthusiastically today. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Professor Gurse, President of Vijnan Parishad Goa, Professor Pai, Vice President and Convener of this series of talks, and all those who have joined this uh, session. I am privileged, it's an honor for me to be part of this uh, series. I am very happy to note that you have already completed 11 of them. I think this is making best use of the opportunity that we have while we are forced to sit inside our homes, but we still continue as much as possible our normal business. When Dr. Pai called me a month back, my first reaction to him was that, I'm sorry, I'm very busy because this happens to be the admission time for uh, Bits Pilani, apart from the campus, I also take some responsibility in university wide. So I said, if I say yes now, I don't know whether I'll get the time to uh, prepare my thoughts. He was not easy, he, he, he was persuasive. And then uh, he called me and then I talked to him over. And what changed is when he mentioned about some of the activities of Vijnan Parishad Goa is doing. Professor Gode mentioned about, uh, Godse mentioned, sorry, Professor Godse mentioned about uh, IAC. It was interesting when, uh, uh, for me to recall that I was part of that uh, activity when school children were called to IAC campus and uh, enthusiastically some of us were giving lectures and talks to them on Sundays and Saturdays in some big halls. So I was reminded of that connection and I couldn't say no. So with that preface, I'm happy to be here. What I will do is uh, I'll share some <coughs> thoughts with you. These are my thoughts accumulated over different phase of my life. And I will try to give a structure. Some of them may you may like, some of them you may not like, but my job is to position a few thoughts and make you challenge them or think about them. And uh, I will plan to do, I, or I plan to do this in about 40 minutes maximum. So what I'll do now is now share the my screen and then uh, take you to the slide. One second, bear with me. Uh, Dr. Pai, I assume I am audible, clear? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay, great. Loud and clear. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, I assume you can see the first slide. Yes, sir. Very well. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir, very well. Okay, thank you. Uh, when I was discussing with Dr. Pai what I should be talking about, he did mention about skills. Then I thought I will talk about science and life skills. What does it actually mean will be clear as we go along. Science, because I am attached to science, and this is the forum where we discuss, possibly you discuss science. And skill is something, you know, which helps us to become better persons. The invocation today started with that thought. When you say Shanti, Om Shanti, you are looking for a peaceful life, not only for us, but for society in general. So I will first, just for the, uh, to position these thoughts, I will take through what is science. You don't need an explanation of what is science. But what is that I will focus on is when I say science, 
of course, we start with Newton uh, to Einstein. We can talk about all great names. But then essentially, it's a system of knowledge concerned with the physical world and the fundamental laws of nature. But it's very important for us to keep in mind that this a study of science or a study in science requires unbiased observations and systematic experimentation. Unbiased observation is important. We are not looking for a solution with the preconceived notion. If I want to prove, and it is my job to prove that ghosts exist, then I will do my experiments and observations in a particular ma manner. That is not science. So it is a pursuit of knowledge, looking for answers to questions. What are the general truths and what are the fundamental laws of nature? The truth as seen by science or understood by science today is not necessarily the absolute truth. That is something which we should accept. The truth is something which is proved by repeated observations and then only it becomes truth as we know today. The fact, because sometimes we are challenged by people who challenge science, saying that how do you know it is not there? How do you know this is there? You don't know, tomorrow somebody may discover. Yes, science does not have that arrogance of saying that some of the knowledge today which we consider as truth may be uh, proved to be wrong tomorrow, but that is part of science. That is something we accept. However, at this point, we should be able to make unbiased observations and systematic experimentations. Repeatability is the essence. We should be able to do the same thing again and again and get the same results. Of course, within the precision that we want. So core to science is rigorous testing of ideas. Today, you, I, th I think if you talk anything, somewhere the COVID pandemic will come. Day in and day out, we talk about vaccines. We do not want to take the vaccine to the society or the public unless they are rigorously tested. So if you want to, that is part of science. Rigorous testing, phase one, phase two, phase three, all the data test goes. So core to science is testing, observations, measurements, and then proving something. In a maze, if you leave the rat, it will also find its way, possibly, way out. But unfortunately, a rat mana does not have, that is as we know today, does not have the kind of intelligence that we have. It will look for a path out. It may find its path eventually. So most of the time, it could be trial and error. You can also do trial and error experiments. Science does not say that you cannot do trial and error. But then, when you do trial and error, you're still doing the experiments. But then the solution that we lead to may be what we think is the right answer. But if you do in a very systematic measurement and way, then we may find another solution. A rat from this maze may just, just come out of it into a much bigger hall. And it may believe that I have come out of it. If you start looking at the horizon and say that that is the end of the world, we can still be comfortable with that. Or we challenge, is there something about that? So science looks for answers, but challenges its own answers that we find. Is there something beyond? Otherwise, in a typical system, as we say, you may find a local minimum. It is not the global minimum, those who understand in uh, optimization. Before I actually get into the skills part, the question is, what is science, what is not science? Now, is economics a science? In Bits Pilani, economics is a department under our sciences. Today, 
you need to study not physics chemistry mathematics alone he may sharia in very some background sharia uh how was kila den ago yeah it may be what why all the others to mute their microphone uh, google meet up yeah it's okay this is part of uh, you know the system it's yeah yeah it's muted that is that fine thank you so there are borderline sciences at some time this very definite borders of math physics chemistry mathematics all these will may go so we should accept that economics social science psychology has something to play with or do something with science that is something which we should accept a scientist cannot also leave aside philosophy moral judgments decisions about application of science now this requires philosophical arguments is there a supernatural thing i talked about ghost is it meaningful these are all discussions one can have so scientists cannot ignore that but that's not generally accepted as a science but it does not mean that is less imp important why i am saying this is in the next part of my talk i will emphasize more and more while i generally talk about science and life skills i'll also bring in argument say we can't keep ourselves saying that i am a scientist i'm not looking at few other morality or ethical arguments a good human being a good scientist should also have the ability to accept that that in some sense will modify the way we look at what the solution for some of the issues that we deal with instead of saying philosophy versus science one can have a big debate in fact if you search there will be lot of articles which can answer the big questions of life what life is it philosophy or is it science so i don't want to go there all that i want all of you to appreciate is that we can't ignore philosophical arguments if you want to do good science philosophers or some people who have more attached to philosophy may say philosophy is the science of sciences so i am not getting into that arguments more than positioning this point that philosophy is to be appreciated even by scientists so science looks for precision the question of what is science what is not science cannot be therefore resolved with that kind of a precision this is science that is not science so if you are scientist this is not a scientific question to ask when i say science and life skills why are you talking about something on leadership suppose you say why are you talking about morality i think that is the wrong question to ask so i would i would like you to appreciate the fact that when you say science do not compartmentalize that it has very flexible borders we should embrace we should take in those parts of knowledge inquiry philosophical inquiries for example as part of requirement for science the american scientist is a good uh, magazine in the latest that is Jul not the latest july august 2020 issue the cover page talks about inside your creative mind and it says how art and science spark inspiration if you want a better world tomorrow what are the people we need how do we prepare ourselves 
this is where art and science comes together it had a false divide for a long time even in your own college in your university look around the humanities department may be in another building science may be in another building buildings are physical barriers but even people working with these departments may not have that ability to mingle accept that knowledge coming from another building as equally important so i want to emphasize today that it is important that art science border has to be broken to a great extent of course they have their relevances their own aesthetic beauty art may focus on a few things which is not really relevant for science that's fine but then a scientist who says i do not appreciate art you should read about da vinci or even newton they all did the greatest or einstein the appreciation for music the art paintings you know they made them one some of the best scientists let me now come to the second part science now skills today's colleges are better at teaching technical skills than life skills that is an observation i make you go to all the curriculum of higher education colleges they are very happy to introduce technical skills but then the recent surveys this based on surveys with the employers it says teaching life skills is the latest requirement in higher education employers characterize recent grads as both both innovative and lazy therefore employers say it is important to teach or have a strong focus on strong life skills for success so i position a statement here for you to consider that college graduates need life skills more than they need technical skills to succeed in the workplace i am not saying that if you have more life skills than technical skills it will give you a better paying job that is not the statement i make you will succeed in the workplace if you have a good grasp understanding of life skills do not ignore technical skills they are required but over emphasis on technical skills over life skills will not make a workplace or make you succeed in the workplace barclay did a survey that is in uk they identified seven key employability skills for this generation resilience resilience proactivity problem solving communication creativity leadership and adaptability they said these are the seven skills employers will look for in the coming days the first resilient means i should be able to cope with challenges or setbacks and turn them into positive and learning experience i have to be proactive i have to take initiative problem solving is part and parcel of science now i will connect a few others to science you think problem solving only is part of science no communication communication is not just technical communication verbal and physical communication is also about ability to listen being creative innovative ideas leadership the other most one of the important point is adaptability can you thrive in challenging conditions today if you look around we are confined or so many restrictions are imposed on us the people who will succeed the countries who will succeed are the ones 
who understand the situation and can adapt themselves they are the ones who will thrive the challenges are not going to be over today it may be covid tomorrow it will be something else can somebody thrive in a changing condition i will touch upon adaptability in the due course of time so first we should understand the workplace is changing because when i was talking to dr pai what is that people would like to hear this he talking about skills you know employment these words came in so i'm just trying to connect some of your interest possibly there was a time when workplace is where you start at the lowest rung in a ladder work hard get a promotion then the next then the next so a progress in life succeeding in workplace means promotions moving up the ladder that was considered as success growth that is changing now the workplace is changing it is becoming more flexible becoming more open it is now like people go over there and do a little bit of this and go over here and do a little bit of that and they have much more varied careers as opposed to sticking to one thing it's like a web you look at the spider in the web it is not perhaps here but you know you have observed spider webs it moves from place to place of course it has a focus you know which bring somebody to its focus i will discuss that point later but then today the workplace is like that you do something here something here. you are not looking for it is not moving up you may be moving in the same but right from day one you know take responsibilities you understand work and then you grow growth is not necessarily vertical of course there will be vertical growth but even horizontal growth is equally relevant so the workplace should not be now seen if i get into this job when will be my next promotion be so if the workplace is changing like this how do i prepare myself that's what we'll focus so employers were asked which trait out of many things is easiest to develop in an employee that you have hired you go to colleges you go to somewhere and then take an employee what is that you can easily teach him and 70% of employers said technical skills technical skills is something which i can teach very fast please be please understand this we can teach colleges also can teach technical skills employers say technical skills i can also teach and it is very quick to change but then they were asked if you could use one word to describe the newest generation of college graduates what is it they said ambitious innovative lazy over confident so these are the words that come to their mind nobody says they have poor technical skills so what comes to your mind when you look at a new generation so if you are preparing our people if many of your teachers and if you are preparing what is that we have to prepare them this is the employer side of course we have our own perspectives so before i proceed let us understand what a skill means skill is something which is very specific learned ability you can teach skill ethics values etc i don't discuss this is a skill skill is something you can teach and then you can master by spending more and more time it's a specific learned abilities that you need to perform to give uh, do a job very well life skills are abilities for adaptive again the word adaptive and positive behavior that enables human beings to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of life there will always be challenges there will be new demands so what is that we prepare in that comes under life skills just to clarify a vocational training they also teach people a plumber or electrician they are taught how to do a job they also learn the skills 
So life skills is different from that, vocational skills or technical skills. Technical skills, which I am not spending time on, that is learning a good programming language, you know, C++, R, Fortran, good old days. Operating systems, technical report writing, project management, how to analyze data, big data, etc. we talk about. How do you actually analyze? What are the tools and uh, you know methods that you will use? So that are technical skills where I am not focusing. I am not undermining the importance of technical skills. But today, we'll talk about life skills. So apart from schools, often, if you see, people will say, OK, in the schools, science teachers have to spend more time on teaching the basics of how to do experiments, etc. As soon as you come to higher education, we think now this is technical skills. No. Schools certainly, science teachers have to teach them life skills through science, but it is part and parcel of higher education also. How do we promote lifelong learning? As I said, we started by the word in the prayer, Shanti. If you need peace in the world, how do you manage conflict? How do you respect gender? Sorry, I think uh, some sudden, okay, sorry. Uh, this is the problem with the technology, you know, I have to up, it's asking, do you want to up? date it should know that this is not the time it should ask me anyway uh, how do you respect gender empathy child care protection these are all learn skills that we need to learn we have to teach so higher education should not be looked at you know how do you create employees for jobs but also we have to create individuals who know how to live a better life with changing times. So that is what is called the holistic development. So when I say skills, life skills, we are looking at preparing a person with holistic development. We are not, not only making great scientists and engineers or managers. Technology is changing exponentially. The modern life is changing with the pace which we find difficult to absorb. What is the outcome? The constant exposure to social media. You watch the younger generation. You can't blame them for using their mobiles almost all the time. So this unfortunately brings a sense of anonymity. You can do anything. Nobody will observe. WhatsApp is encrypted. That's a wrong notion. People lose identity because social media pictures or creates heroes. And you see, I'm much below that person. And that is a created uh, avatar. So people can develop that sense of inferiority, fear, uncertainty, etc. Overcoming this, teaching people to manage this is the life skills that I want to talk about. So what is science to do with this? Science is often about solving problems. Problem solving, science, you all understand. What do we solve the problems? We solve the problems of people, animals, the environment. So if science is solving these problems, that is what we need to look at as skills, life skills. Being creative is asking the questions, exploring. That is part and parcel of science. And that is essential trait or the skill that we all should have to become better persons. So science and life skill, no. Science itself is a life skill. So whether somebody does arts degree or a science degree or engineering degree or a medical, I think the basic essence of science should become part of our life. Just look at the time that people spend solving problems. Most of the time is firefighting. You ask your 
senior professors administrators your own parents or you you yourself everybody says i have problem i am busy i have a problem so most of the time we are solving a problem but that is not science problem solving in science is different we are all problem solving but we have not understand understood what is that we are doing wrong that makes us spend our time in fire fighting rather than looking at the root cause this a quote which possibly everyone knows by this time einstein said if i had an hour to solve a problem i would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and 5 minutes thinking about solutions so you pose a problem he said 55 minutes i know i have only 1 hour to solve the problem but 55 minutes i'll think about the problem but the way most of the times we teach children or our students is we specify a problem you have 5 minutes and you start immediately writing the equation that is how we solve possibly that is not the right method half of science is asking the right questions so if you are teaching problem solving we should understand this it is about asking the right question if you do not know how to ask the right question you will get the wrong answer or we believe we have found the right answer so the scientist is not a person who gives the right answers he is the one who asks the right questions if you have asked the right questions you will answers will come many a times i will illustrate with the example i come as professor godse mentioned i come from somewhere near this coastal area near mangalore right you know my, uh, we used to have a arecanut plantation i come from family we had a small plantation there was a day i used to go to the field uh, the plantation and then see when a person came and then uh, you know he had to pluck the right right uh, areca since you are in goa all of you perhaps you know this you know that fellow will climb the tree and then he will switch from one tree another tree you know my heart will lose a one beat when i see that it is thrilling but it's a very risky thing and that is an art climbing and plucking and finishing in it or is it science people now today you don't have people to do that so people start inventing things so they now the second is something around i think it is around year 2000 somebody found out that okay i will make some uh, way uh, i can also climb the tree without too much of an expertise he made some gadgets and it worked for not that it became very popular but he showed how to climb the tree 2019 this i just taken uh, 2019 engineers bike for climbing are a tree to make farmers life easier somebody near bantwal or somewhere near mangalore actually invented this so with the minimum paddling you can climb the areca tree so there is a problem what is the problem the tra- tree is tall and you need a person to climb all the way and then identify which is the right one to pluck now there is a problem now you are finding a solution i said 30 40 years back i had this problem on the right side even today that problem 90% of the problem still exists we use the same technology of person climbing there are very few and to look for and then karnataka government i saw last year they are training people how to climb trees and then because you couldn't find the solution so what i'm saying is do we post the question right now the right most is interesting gadget to climb the tree but then i remember and you also know most of these areca plantations also have creepers on the trees i think it is one on the behind it is there in that that is you have this uh, black pepper creepers on the tree now if you take this they all will get damaged so first of all when you are looking for a solution to a problem first think about the problem look what is that you are solving are we solving the problem of climbing a tree or are you pl- 
solving a problem bigger than that once you have spent sufficient time thinking about the problem possibly you will be able to solve a systematic thinking experimentation is a part of science but then that is not the only one can you think out of the box now this tree shows areca growing at a height where you can pluck he need not even climb the tree so while that problem where you had the problem of plucking ripe areca had its own solution if you go in systematically maybe you will arrive but today we don't have the best solution possibly but creative thinking out of the box thinking this one example okay now you, that problem is gone now this may bring another problem now when i showed this picture to my wife she said now it is very easy for thieves to take this pluck and then run away before it right before you can actually do yeah this actually may bring new problems but then the essence of is that you need not limit your imagination you may find solutions out of the box and science should encourage that another life skill is collaboration most of the scientists who work in vaccine medicines today all together work on finding a solution to the vaccine publishing papers in great journal that's all secondary we will publish later but let us all come together scientists are not very well known to reveal their you know work with others but this is one thing which we see great collaboration tomorrow one of the important feature or the skill that will be de demanded from us is do we know how to collaborate as process orientation a while systematic thinking is required you also should teach people how do you create in a systematic manner in a process oriented fashion if that is something which you want to inculcate when we teach science conclusions is not no conclusions is more oh, sorry conclusion is more important than the right or wrong answers most of the time we pose a question and ask the students write the answer if it is wrong zero marks if it is right 10 out of 10 look at it differently you pose a question which has which is open ended and what do they conclude by a process of thinking experimenting is more important than is the answer right or wrong that requires or enabling them in exploratory learning you do not say this is the equation this is the answer apply to this situation you have to teach them persistence they will fail so how to learn from failure so as part of science learning from failure is an important concept many of you we have spent time in the laboratories the experiment might not have worked in the first time but somebody said there is an answer so you may try to reach there but it was a, suppose it is more open ended experiments we may try assembling things finding an answer we may fail repeat it this will become an important life skill in the future how do you learn from failure how to change the approach explore different ways of dealing with the same question requires flexibility and adaptability when i talk to some of our recruiters this is a very specific to bits pilani experience we have a, our students do quite well i ask them what is that one trait of a bitsian which is possibly not seen in some of the other best institutions in the country say they invariably say adaptability if you create students who can adapt market changes the business changes 
the importance or the where they make money or they will lose money that changes continuously can an employee adapt that requires ability for lifelong learning and flexibility it is easier to say flexibility but then the rigidity comes when we insist on attendance syllabus question answers right wrong this is what perhaps we are trained more and more to do when we teach science or anything if we do not allow the students that flexibility of exploring making mistakes encouraging failures we may not possibly create people who can adapt so flexibility and adaptive adaptability are life skills which we should be giving more and more training to our students they come in the last 5 minutes of my talk this picture it is not a tornado i don't know whether you can see you can i don't know whether you understand what this is this is it is a flock of bird birds great thank you so there's so much that you can learn i will come to this towards the end of my talk what i am saying right now connect this with that you need to observe and learn from nature that's the biggest mistake we make today science should be more and more about observing and learning from nature the picture i showed today is a great volume of research knowledge under the broad heading of swarm intelligence it may be the bird flock it may be ants if you have carefully observed this i'm sure all of you spend some more time when you see how do they make those patterns how does the bird how does the bird you know it knows that it is not creating a pattern or it is not doing something to create a particular pattern but it is observing its surroundings making its local judgments but then overall it contributes to a bigger picture a collective behavior of decentralized self organized systems there is a lot of intelligence built in there if you watch ants and all of you have seen this because you see they making a line where do they make the line for they are looking for the nearest route to reach food how do they do that and some of you will know they each ant acquires knowledge looking at or experiencing its surroundings and leaves behind a small amount of what is called a pheromone so a locally you learn something leave behind something for others to absorb learn from collectively they achieve a particular result if you are looking for shortest path in a computer network to send data and colony optimization is actually a research it will help you learning from the assolutely today swarm intelligence is employed in artificial intelligence swarm intelligence is part of that you talk about swarm robotics so science is about observation learning from observation more and more as you learn from nature you become more closer to the nature and also you will find solutions to many questions that you have in life the last point which i want to mention is about often discussed work life balance so we talk we build all these skills technical skills life skills 
today you will see a tome of literature papers discussions blogs if you just like type work life balance in google you will get thousands of articles discussions how do you balance this work and life immediately what comes to your mind is uh, like a scale you know balancing means work here life there when i was discussing with my son who is a grown up he told apa that is a wrong question there is nothing like balancing work and life the point that is being made is that the life skills that i talked about which are important for your work is also important to life when you understand this when you absorb that inculcate and within you then managing work and life is no more two different things work life will become the same because it is not that work is totally different from life work is part of your life so it is not balancing work and life however there is a difference between professional life and personal life i'm not saying that there is no boundary therefore you do whatever you do is work or whatever you do all the time you spend your time no you have your personal space life personal space you have a professional life you should know how to separate them but then the skills that i talked about they are common for professional life and personal life if you master them and i propose here that science gives you a lot of input in how to do this that is when you learn to manage professional life and personal life equally and reach a position of peace of mind not only for yourself but people around you that is when you will be able to radiate that confidence and bring more people to you that is when the world as we create more and more of that the world will be a better place for all of us to be when we reach there now we need not therefore week days are over now weekend you see typically that is a notion that we have five days workplace let us say five days work then weekend we enjoy i don't want to work during a weekend i am now questioning that if your weekend is you are doing the same life skills that you have learned you are using week days also you use the same thing so this very strict border of weekdays weekend is no more required otherwise you know you use weekend to go to the beach go on a trek but what do you do then you some of you may like photography i like photography when you take a photo what do you observe you observe nature what is that you learn you think it has nothing to do with your work life no similarly during weekdays you ignore your personal life no so the border between weekdays and weekends will go and then it will merge i am nowhere saying that spend all your time ignore your personal life no i am a strong believer that i need to separate this person and spend sufficient time on personal life enriching myself spending time with my close ones in the family or friends thank you very much for joining me on this saturday afternoon which is a weekend i don't know whether it's a professional life or personal life for you but then i appreciate you being part of this discussion thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor agram sir Yeah. it gives me great pleasure that uh, you covered a lot of items in the things there may be i think i 